Welcome back to RimWorld, and I've been doing some research, and you guys in the comments have actually helped me out a little bit with this one, that we have um, sanity loss, which I didn't realize was a separate system from the base game sanity loss system, seeing as that technically already exists. This is something entirely different. I didn't actually realize this. So this is entirely my own mistake, entirely my own ignorance there. So we've got severe sanity loss, which actually makes her much less efficient at just about everything. Um, Although apparently better at moving and manipulation. Am I reading that right? 113%. Uh, oh, but her consciousness is down there. So I guess it's going to be worse overall. Right, okay. So what we want to do then. Um, I don't actually know how to clear it. But I have noticed there is a go mad clear sanity loss button. It's night time. The power's off. But we should be okay for a couple of days. You know what? I'm going to go mad. Try again. There we go. Igor succumbed to mental break. However, has restored their sanity. She's going in to the lost city of Carcosa. Sure, why not? She's going to sleep. That's fine. You know what? We can have two birds, one stone at night time anyway. And she, it is increasing her rest as well, which is great. Nice. That's going to hopefully cheer up a lot. It's going to make things a lot more efficient. One of you has also said, and, and this is something I found out in my own research, is that the HP Lovecraft Storyteller, and I'm in hindsight really glad we removed some of the other difficulty mods, it's very, very difficult. And we need to get a decent kill box set up as soon as possible because apparently the, the monsters and the things that it can send after us are, are severely difficult. Like, they can really messes up very quickly and with one colonist we've got to be very very careful about how we want to deal with this so i feel like um oh was that it was that really all we need to do oh well that seems like the best outcome i imagine there are much worse um sanity outcomes than that one i feel like we got very lucky there all right so we're gonna still try and recruit this gun before we do anything else what i think we need to do is sort out the power number one secondly immediately start working on defenses. And I don't think any of you are going to disagree with that. I didn't realize we had a geothermal jenny there as well. Oh, shit, we've got two. Well, that could be very, very useful just for um, really decent backup power. So uh, what are we going to do about the kill box? Now, the issue is we have um, we have an entrance to the map right here. Now, I don't like building right near the edge of the map, and that's basically what we've done here. Could be a double-edged sword, obviously. If they spawn over here, they're going to get... Very, very little time to react to them. But if they spawn all the way over here, we're going to have all the time in the world to set up. We could even build more defenses before they get here. Um, how do we want to do this? Well, we've got shit tons of steel. So building... Oh, we've got 767 steel. Damn. So we could build sandbags. Now, I may also build a, um, a maze for them to go through to actually get to us. So why don't we go ahead and do that as well? So we'll go ahead and build... Um, ooh, steel walls? What is that? Five, it's five steel per wall. Oh, that's the same as the sandbag though, isn't it? Is that not just way more effective? Okay, we'll do that then. So, we'll go and just build a little bit of a maze. I might block this area off so they, they go round. As long as we make it three blocks thick, sappers will be forced to go around to a different area. I don't think that's a bad idea. So, why don't we... Oh, maybe even cut some stone blocks. I feel like it's a massive waste of steel. Maybe that's just me, but I feel like building a giant wall three blocks thick out of steel here is, is a massive, massive waste. So I feel like, okay, we're not guaranteed to get a very difficult raid this soon. So why don't we go ahead and put down a stone cutter's table. What do we want? Okay, we can make out wood. That's not a problem. Um, we'll put that in the uh, special, super special mood room. Uh, we'll go ahead and build her a table chair to go along with it. A table chair, a dining chair to go along with it. Get some trees cut down. Work on that. Churn out a shit ton of stone blocks. We'll have that be our number one priority and we can turn those into defensive. I'll have um, a maze built so that they can go through that. At the end, we'll cover it in embrasures and sandbags, and we'll build a moat through it as well, so they move very, very slowly through it. Give can work on some traps. I feel like it's not a bad idea. So what I'll probably do is, is do a three-block thick wall there, a three-block thick wall here, so they can only pass through this area. And this is where we'll build the maze, down this sort of corridor uh, in, in this, this area by the geezer. That's my plan. Let's give it a go. Mm, we just had the crow event again, except one of them spawned dead, and it even mentioned that in the event. It, it said that one of them lies dead amongst them. Maybe it's because I killed the last ones. You know what? I'm going to keep doing it. Fuck off. Fuck off, crows. They're probably going to eat my crops or something like that. That's what all I assume that they could possibly do. Um, Unless it's some sort of countdown. Ooh, maybe it could be a countdown. So maybe when all the crows are dead, something really bad happens. I'm not sure. That's just what I'm sort of um, extrapolating from what the game has given me here. We are going to send Eagle through to go hunt them down and kill them dead, though, just in case they cause any issues. She basically had a full night's rest. Oh, except not really at all. Okay. Um, kill these goddamn crows. Then we should be okay. If we untick that sheep, okay, she's going to eat a survival meal. Then she's going to... No, open fire at the crows. All right, there's one dead. There we go. Right, they're all dead. Okay, that's fine. So... We've started working on the stone cutting table, just got to finish that off. Now, I have noticed that one thing we do have access to here is skylights. Now, I talked about this very briefly. 
we need glass, which you make at a furnace, just out of, I think, stone blocks. But essentially, it, it does exactly what you'd imagine. It counts as a roof, but also allows natural light through. So in the mountain, going to be useless unless we uh, we find an area where there is natural light already down through it. But inside the house, might not be too much of a bad idea because it would save us money on, obviously, powering lamps and things like that. Um, why don't we put one... I'm not really sure whether it's even worth putting any because it's, it's really good for indoor crop growing, you know, hydroponics, things like that. But for the base, I mean, there doesn't seem much point in doing it in this one, mainly because, obviously, you know, we've already got it fully lit up and we're not inside a mountain. But for the future, it's good to know when we've got a decent amount of energy that we can have indoor farms as well. My god, she actually did it, the madman. Eagles promised friendship to Abanero, making him join. Abanero is accepted and joined Eagles community. That's so good. We've got a second colonist now. Right. Um, what are you good at then, Abanero? Absolutely nothing. Right. That's good to hear. Um, let's have him do just about everything that we'd expect a normal colonist to do. I don't want him doing anything that's delicate if he's bad at it, like building or cooking, because obviously he'll just waste the resources. Um, he really can't do fuck all, can he? He does have a, a major passion for crafting, though, which in the long term, as long as we keep him alive, will be incredible. I'm going to have him clean. I'm going to have him haul as his second highest priority. If you can't do that, let's get him stone cutting. And if you can't stone cut, let's have him craft. And I mean, honestly, you can do any of these. Honestly, don't mind. Um, that's going to be irrelevant now anyway, because obviously you can't do that. Now, uh, construction. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to have him construct. You know what? You could deconstruct with no problems. Because that that's not skill reliant, to my knowledge. Um, whereas if, if someone with, with a low construction skill tries to build something, they can waste resources. And we could also hunt, I suppose, if we gave him a gun. Oh, we do have a spare assault rifle, don't we? We found it in that mechanoid room. Damn. Okay, since you're all here, Abinette thinks you should give your faction a name. What shall your faction be called? You guys in the comments have actually suggested some names. So I'm going to go and say, let's do it down to a community. Let's do this diplomatically via committee. I'm going to leave it at the default. And then there is a mod that allows you to rename it later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it something generic right now. So the faction can be called uh, Cults. And uh, I'm sure that won't get the agency after us. And this, this element in particular is going to be called um, Eagle's Madness. There we go. Now, I want you guys in the comments, the most upvoted comment will be the one we'll pick. So if you see a suggestion you like, go for that one. Obviously, if you want to leave your own suggestion, go for that one as well. And I'll just pick whatever is up there. So good luck. Cult, Eagle's Madness. Obviously, I'll might overrule some of them if you come up with, like, you know, giant ass cult. Then maybe, maybe we won't pick that one. But, you know, it's down to you guys here. I'll rename that one next episode, assuming I remember. Right, he's going to haul rat dead. Uh, it seems to be rotten, so I really don't give a shit about the dead rat, I'll be honest with you. Let's get Eagle through. Where is she right now? Oh, she's repairing the bone telegraph. See, the bone telegraph is useful because I assume it allows us to get in contact with trade ships as well. Um, allows us to contact everybody, so that's pretty decent. Um, who's our closest neighbor? It wouldn't hurt actually getting ourselves some allies this early on. Especially if we do come under attack because they will send uh, assistance. So we've got a lot of... Dark Blue seems like a powerful faction and they're all over the world. So we might want to talk to them. The uh, Kingless Accord. We're also between two of their settlements here. Hostile minus 20. Let's get you in touch with them. Call the Kingless Accord. See what we can do. Fight for a visit, but they're hostile. Um, request a trade caravan. Must be an ally. And request immediately military aid. Must be an ally. So the only way we can actually ally with them in that case. We need to get them to neutral. Otherwise they will just instantly disconnect. We can send them a gift if they're neutral. Like 200 silver. At least you used to be able to in Rimworld. The only thing we can really do to increase their opinion then is build beds. Uh, which when they come and visit, that'll increase their opinion if they had a nice time, if they're well fed and entertained. We can also, um, obviously if we defeat them in a raid, we can send their, we can heal up their people and send them back, and that will increase opinion as well. Shit, so we've got no allies at all in the world. That's good to hear. That's exactly what I'd expect from Igor Throog. What we could do with Abenario then, well, before we get everything else set up, let's have them deconstruct all of this. This is all steel. So let's select similar. Uh, deconstruct, and then we'll also get the floors removed as well. No, I think these are steel tile floors. Oh, they're dark carpet. Um, I don't give too much of a shit about that. I give a shit about the concrete, though, because concrete we can turn into a nuclear reactor. You know what? Let's just take the whole thing apart. Now, there's another room here, which I didn't notice. Um, might have a mechanoid in it. Could potentially have a mechanoid in it. Let's wait for that time. And what I want to do before that is just make sure there's no roofs over any of this. Um, no, we're good. That's, that's mountain roof, isn't it? Yeah, overhead mountain. Let's not worry about that. And uh, let's turn that one off. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's give that a go then. Abanero will hopefully go ahead and do that. Igor is deconstructing still. You know what? Let's do it the other way around. Change my mind. So what we do, build, um, add bill, make marble blocks, because that's what we have a shit ton of on this map. In fact, that might be the only one we have on this map from the brief look. 
Uh, it certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Wow. Um, oh no, hang on, what's this one? Limestone, right, so we've got shit tons of limestone and shit tons of marble. Sure, we'll just do marble though, because we've got a lot of mar marble blocks kicking around the base. So we'll say, um, let's have you fabricate marble blocks. Do until we've got, what, 200? That's not a small amount, but it's not a big amount either. We don't want him committing too much time just making marble blocks, because there are more useful things we can actually do instead of that. Pause when satisfied, and we'll say unpause when we've only got, what, 50 left? 40? 60? 60 seems fine. Um, anything within sort of an 82 ingredient ra radius, so it'll just be immediate blocks around the house. You won't wander all the way to the other side of the map to get them. Chop bamboo into wood. Now, what I am doing is here growing bamboo plants, because bamboo plants are a very fast, uh, wood-yielding product. Because we are deforesting very quickly and the trees aren't growing as fast as I'm using them, especially when we've got wood-fired generators. So automatically having fuel for the generator at a sort of unlimited amount seems pretty decent to me. So we'll definitely do that. Um, I'll add that bill above it, because that's definitely more important. And we'll do that forever. Forever, as long as they are within the stockpile of the house. There we go. <gasps> Damn, I've got hiccups. Great. That'll do. Alright, those look like pretty good work jobs. So he's probably going to immediately, if we go ahead and prioritise him. Oh, shit, did I set that to... Oh, of course I set deconstruct to management. Okay, let's not worry about that then. Um, Eagle, I think I have more important stuff to do than maybe deconstructing that steel wall. Um, such as what, though? I mean, researching, obviously. Right, yeah, get back on the research game. Let's, let's draft and undraft them. So I have an arrow It's going to be hauling Scyther dead? Really? Why are you not stone cutting there, friend? No part... Oh, the door must be locked to... Ah, there we go. Okay. Boom. Visitors not allowed. Uh, change lock in order to... What, what do we do? Uh, clear owners? Uh, unlock? That, are we good? How's that? Uh, uh, change, change lock in order to apply settings. Un unlock? Uh, Eagle, Eagle can go in now. Oh, locking, unlocking, bone creep door. Right, they have to manually interact with it. I didn't know that. Okay, so yeah, it's locked to those guys. Visitors allowed. So, locking, I assume. Uh, when unlocked, doors to settings do not apply. Therefore, all humanoids capable. So, we do that. And then we right-click and prioritize lock and unlocking. There we go. Okay, I see. I didn't realize you had to actively interact with it. It's probably under the basic items uh, workload then. Okay, sweet. So, we should be able to do that now. Yeah, here. It's awesome. Right. That's a good supply line setup then. Oh god, I think this is really, really bad. A group of Orion Sorp soldiers from the Riding a Rhino. Okay, now the Orion Corp is added by Orion's Faction Discovery Mod. They're very, very overpowered. Uh, okay, um... No, I want to click on the actual person. There we are, Lynn. Right, gear. She's got uh, an MRG5 pistol, which I have a feeling... Yeah, look at that. They're worth 3,500 or 3,300 each. They have 100% accuracy. Within a certain damage, and they do 30% armor penetration and 20 damage. What? Um. Shit. Okay. Uh. Wow. Okay. That's really, really bad. We might be in trouble here. Like, we genuinely might just die to this person. Where the fuck are they? So they're all the way down there. Uh, female Orion Corp director. So this is the head of the Orion Corp as well. Right. And she's got an Orion next turn. Okay, so if we can keep her alive, we're going to pull her spine out. And if we can equip that, that also gives... Look at that. Moving plus 80%, manipulation plus 80%. That's fucking huge. Um, shit. Here we go. Walking past their fellow rhinos. Okay, Eagle Throog, uh is in a good position. Open fire. Fire. Oh, good shot. Oh, a headshot. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, shit. Look at that. One bullet. And it's destroyed Eagle's line. Oh, no way. Holy shit. Well, that's going to make Eagle much, much less efficient. And we killed her as well, which is a, a, a double loss there. You're going to quit that pistol because that's absurdly powerful. My god, that's such a shame. Wow. I mean, it could have ended much, much worse. But that is, that is genuinely one of the worst outcomes I suppose we could have had there. Can we strip their bionics out of them if they're dead? No, we can't, can we? Um, Whatever. Just go ahead and haul that body. Get it out of here. I thought I'd give Abenerio Hero uh, the, the room, the, the great room with all the stuff in it, because that was going to keep him happy. Very impressive bedroom. Um, so that would keep him a little bit happier. She's not going to be jealous of it or anything, so there's no absolutely no downside to it. A local wild boar has gone mad. It's a real shame the spiders all died out. Damn it, I was kind of hoping we'd see some sort of crazy spider colony, but there wasn't many that spawned in, and, and obviously they weren't doing very well. It's a real shame. All right, Igor, how are you doing? Uh, what was the quality of that tending? Not very good. 25 out of 40, though, so she should be good by tomorrow to go back to work. That's a real shame. Um, 
she could just research and she'll probably be okay, seeing as, you know, it's 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 only you know, 27 out of 40. She's only got 10 points left. She's not in any chance of dying or anything like that. She's not, she's not got blood loss or, or anything, even though she was shot in the fucking lung. Apparently, she'll still be fine. So why don't we go ahead and just turn off bed rest? Um, or we should at least say if she can't do anything else, do bed rest. I feel like that's not a bad idea. So research set to level one. I'll put it above research, or below research, but above everything else. So if she can't research, then she will uh, go to bed. A blight. Oh, God, that's really bad as well. Oh, seriously, that's almost all of our heal route. Oh, you fucking piss game. All right, um, that's going to select all of it, isn't it? God damn it. Okay, time for some carpal tunnel syndrome. Right, let's see what we've got. So we want to cut these ones, cut this one. Now, I should set up an area to be able to cut plants to maximum as well, seeing as cut plants will only affect it when I designate them to chop wood or do things like this. It's not in going to interrupt his regular schedule at all, so we'll set that one to maximum. Even though he's bad at it, again, he doesn't need to be skilled to pull ground plants out of the ground. So, um, let's prioritize both of you boys getting on that immediately before it spreads. Shit, what is that? Oh, it's the fucking boar? Hey, piss off, boar. Dinner? Nice. Uh, relationship with the White Bramble Confederacy have changed from minus 20 to minus 30. Good, just what I wanted to hear. Alright, so what I can tell from just a quick glance here is that we've completely finished... Uh, all of the Blight Cone, that's good. It's a real shame, because that heal root was almost 70% grown there, so it wouldn't have been much longer before we actually got some harvest from it. A little bit annoying. Um, yeah, this Storyteller is kind of a bit relentless. We, you know, we're not doing particularly well, but I imagine our wealth is very massively skewed. So wealth determines, or at least it used to, but cr please correct me if I'm wrong. Wealth determines the strength of raids and the frequency of raids and events that happen in your colony. So if we go to history, and we go to, uh, well, this one here, so you can see that We've basically already got, what's that, 45,000 wealth? Oh, God. Um, a lot of that is coming from buildings as well. So half our wealth is coming from buildings, which is a little bit annoying. Now, the other issue is, we just got that freaking really high-powered gun. Look at that. So out of nowhere, we've shot up by another, by another, what is that, 5,000? That's so annoying. Man, um, what can we do, really? What can we do in that scenario? I'm not going to metagame it and, like, leave the gun outside to deteriorate so it reduces our overall wealth or anything like that, because it is a very useful item. It just means we're going to have to be very, very careful because the next raids are going to hit harder and harder. So I'm going to start working on a warehouse before we work on the defensive. This this is taking priority a little bit just because our warehouse is full. I'd like to convert this into just a bedroom for him as well. So this can be prioritizing work and work only. We could get a furnace in there. You know, we could get some workbenches in there as in the, um, what are they called? Sorry, tool cabinets instead. So that we could try and buff up all the work in this one room. Right now it's only affecting that, so I'm not building any yet. But we could also get ourselves, um, let's take a look here. We get ourselves a furnace. Which would definitely help out a lot. The, the smelter would let us build uh, skylights, things like that. We could go for, you know, machining table to dismantle some of those mechanoids and try and get some components and things out. Lots of things that we actually need this room for. And a bedroom is not one of them, I wouldn't say. So we've actually got the submod that allows um, unskilled workers to deliver blocks to, um, say, say for example, this wall here. He could go and deliver those marble blocks without actually having to build it. Now... I completely ignored that, and I really wish I hadn't, because this guy can make Eagle's life so much easier if he just comes over and drops off all this, you know, wood that we need to build over the swamp, or all of this marble blocks that we need Eagle to, you know, build up the walls with. So, what I've done then, if he can deliver to, say, a construction project or something more essential, then he will definitely do that, then he'll actually start stone cutting instead. I think that's a much, much better idea, so that we can actually expedite the sort of process of new buildings being built as well. So, in theory, now, he should be... What are you doing? Playing horseshoes? Well, that, I wanted to show off this mod, but okay, that's fine. All right, we're almost finished with it. That worked out really, really well. I'm really enjoying this mod that allows him to deliver resources because not only will he deliver them, but he'll also prepare the ground that they're going to go on as well. So if we look here, he's not only, as you just saw there, delivering those blocks, but he's cutting down the trees. He's preparing the terrain. Even with, um, he was saying this little bit of farm that I expanded here. The first little bit was prepared and it's saving Eagle through so much time because these are unskilled jobs that don't necessarily need someone great to do. So she's just absolutely flown through this. So the new warehouse is almost finished. All we've got to do is get this wooden floor finished as well, which I don't think is a bad idea. Um, a low worker named Daffita Far calls for you from nearby. Um, it's, sorry? Oh, it's a demon. It's an elder demon. Right, it's 2,510 years old. We'll have to fight the tribes people on its tail. I mean, we can't say no. We absolutely cannot say no. Two uh, penitents? I don't know what that is. Hello, my friend. Short flight. Sorry? Flight to the currently visible area? Oh, right, okay. Sonic Blast pushes characters away five tiles. Okay. Night Owl, which is good. That's just free. Um, oh, my God. 
really good at mining, really good at plants. Not good at intellectual or crafting, that's fine, because you're not going to be doing that anyway, my friend. Um, undergrounder, that's fine, absolutely. Psychically deaf, that's incredible. Night Elf, very, very useful. They get a mood boost if they're up between, um, what is that, 11 and 6? Wow. Okay, that worked out really, really well, right? You are, I'm, I'm going to just assume that we're going to be able to keep you alive. So let's set you up 11 till 6. So that's uh, 23 till 6. And we'll just extend a couple of hours beyond that as well. Um, sort of there. And you know what? Who would not say 7 o'clock is night time? Maybe that's just me. Maybe, I, I suppose it more means dark than night time. But, um, so you're getting 8 hours of sleep. And you want 3 hours of recreation. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3 hours of recreation. Going to be awake at 7 o'clock and then wake up at uh, 7 till 7, basically, their job. So that's fine. Um, what else are you good at? Have you got any gear? I don't know how these things fight. I don't even know if they can fight. Oh, well. Um, well, this is good because they're running over a river and they've got that head start on the AI. When the AI spawns in, by that time, Eagle Throog and Abaniria could be ready to take them out. Oh, they're just people? Oh, they're just people on, uh, on... One's on an alpaca, one's on a panther. A little bit more threatened by the panther, I won't lie. Okay, um, we've got our overpowered gun now. So, this shouldn't be too difficult. I don't know why they chased this guy. He seems really, really good. Now, I don't know if there's anything special I need to do with an elder thing. Oh, shit, this is the thing that we ate. Right, now I understand why we got a malice for butchering human-like. Um, whoops. Ha, <laughs> okay, um... That wall's not going to be finished by the time we get here, is it? So, let's go ahead and just hide behind here. Can you even equip a weapon? Can you equip a gun? Oh, they can? Nice. Okay, welcome aboard. Attack and get in the lineup, my friend. We're going to be a firing squad of death. Oh, look at this. Wait, can he even fire it, though? Okay, you can't fire the gun, though. Right, okay. That's a little disappointing, but that's fine. Um, I don't know how they expected to defend themselves in that case. Someone will have to let me know how these things work, because I have no idea. Um, is it bothered by hauling human beings? Doesn't seem to be. Night owl in the daytime? Doesn't seem bothered by dead human beings. Well, that's good to know. You are also, my friend, on cremation. Um, I'll put that as priority one. So, what are we going to do with this guy? I suppose you can maintain the plants and things. Well, that's one less job for Eagle Throog, which is obviously great to know. Um, he's also very good at plant cutting, mining, drilling, quarrying, growing, harvesting, everything. Nice. Uh, welcome aboard. This was definitely, definitely worth it. Not bad at construction either. 6 out of 20. That's, that's not awful. It's not great, but it's not awful. Um, you can also have repair if you want. Oh, shit. They're also a pretty alright cook. They're not the best cook, but if Eagle Throog is out for the count, say she's catatonic or whatever, we've got a good backup cook as well. Damn. You are really good. I don't know whether or not these creatures are more inclined to be being better than humans. Maybe, maybe there's something like that. that they're particularly skilled in one area. I'm just, just guessing at this point. Um... Loading and unloading transport pods and caravans, that's irrelevant for a while. Anyway, delivering resources to construction products by all means, although you are going to be building it, so there's no point in doing that one. Hauling, eh, cleaning, nah, again, I'll just set a four for cleaning in those two. Nice. Okay, that's really, really good. Wow. Uh, we're going to need another bedroom, though. So thank God we're starting to build this warehouse so we can convert this one into a bedroom, and he can have this one, I suppose. Sweet. Oh, they do get malice for the corpses. That's a little bit of a shame, then. Okay, um... Doesn't matter too much, because it's not like we've got any more corpses around for a while, but I will turn you off of cremate, just for reference. Because we might end up getting a colonist who is a psychopath, so they're absolutely in charge of cremation. Or maybe we could find a demon that doesn't mind that so much. I'm not sure how it works. Um, why is none of them sleeping? Well, it's probably because I haven't for a start. Oh, no, he's a night owl. Right. Okay, fair enough. Carry on with it, then. Good work. Now, what's he doing now? Gathering spider silk to inventory? Why are you going all the way down there for that? Oh, bulk goods caravan. Oh, that's really good. Okay, thank God for that. What is that thing? That is a massive penguin. I want a massive penguin. Can I, excuse me, can I buy a massive penguin? Hey, don't mind me, I'm friendly. Don't shoot the demon. Um, really bad at social. Yeah, like, absolutely awful at social. Who's our best social socialist? Oh my god, it's Eagle Throog and a skull mask. Um, does that affect trading with people? No, and I wouldn't, wouldn't imagine it would, seeing as they've also all turned up in skull masks. Unhappy nudity, who? Why have you taken your clothes off? Did they deteriorate, maybe? Oh, shit. All his clothes have deteriorated. Well, let's hope this bulk goods trader has something for us. So, I have set a trading spot. So, they will come all the way to our front door. Eagle, I'm going to get you to go and trade with them. Because we do have some things we can trade. And we've also got a uh, pretty decent amount of silver as well. Um, What have we got that's worth our time? Mushrooms. Absolutely, you can have those. We don't need those so much. I was only going to give us 50. Oh, 56 silver isn't too bad. Sell them all of our spare rice. I mean, I'm sure we've got shit tons of that. You know what? We'll sell them uh, 150 rice. We'll sell them cloth. Shit, we could sell them all of our cloth. Because I'm not going to be using that for a while. We'll sell them uh, 250 cloth. 
We'll sell them all of the bird skin, all of the light leather, all of all of these skins. Because furs and leathers aren't going to be useful when we are in um, permanent summer. What we're going to do is eventually grow Devil Strand, which is heat resistant. So that's very good for making clothes up, especially in an environment like this. We need to buy Eldritch Wool Parker. I'm in. Wait, a Thrombo Wool... A Thrombear Wool Duster. Right. Now that's good against heat, though, as far as I recall. Dusters are, are good at getting rid of heat. Yeah, blocking the sun and grit of the outdoors. Might be worth buying some of those. Um... Do they have anything more valuable to us this early on? No? Okay, I'm going to buy the, the duster then for Naked Guy over there. Oh, speed skin suits. I forgot how broken these things were. So this is again from... I think this is from the Glitter Tech mod. Global work speed plus 400%, but obviously it also costs uh, 4,000 silver. Could we? What if we sold everything? What if we sold absolutely everything? Could we buy it then? Not even close. Like, actually not even remotely close. God damn it. Okay, uh, don't worry about it too much then. They can have the alpaca meat. They can have the panther meat. They can have the mushrooms. I want to keep at least some rice in storage. So we'll sell them 250. So we've got 40 in storage. We'll sell them 250 cloth. We can have all of that, like I said. We want the medicine. Thank you. I think I will keep my medicine. And I suppose we'll buy the duster so he's not completely naked. Now, obviously, he needs trousers. Oh, no, we won't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll actually just build ourselves a, a clothing station instead. Oh, they've only got 840 silver. You fucks. Right. Um, 100. And 100. And... I mean, I assume these things don't help with temperature, do they? Reasonably tough, but doesn't insulate. Yeah, that's what I thought. Good at temperature regulation. Oh, camel hide. Right, keep the camel hide. What is it? Chthonian chitin. Um, we have that? Oh, no, they have that. Right, okay, doesn't matter too much. Uh, is this good at uh, insulation? Insulates well against heat. Okay, we could keep the insulators. Sell the rest. Perfect. Thank you. Relationships with the crescent, crescent shifters have shifted from 8 till 9. I didn't know that. So in the future, what we should probably do is just trade the very, very... Even if we're not interested in anything, just trade one thing to them so we get at least some opinion. At least I assume that will work. Um, unless you have to hit a certain threshold. It doesn't matter either way. Okay, so I want a bed built there, but for now he's, he's actually sleeping on the sleeping spot. We'll get some wood tomorrow and actually finish that off. This is looking good. Then we need shit tons of wood so that we can actually finish the floor in here. And so that we can build... Obviously, this bedroom is going to need a dresser and, and end tables and things like that. Uh, let's go chop wood. And designate all of this. How long till the bamboo's grown, anyway? Now, bamboo is one of the fastest growing plants in the world, so you kind of imagine it would go pretty damn quick when it's actually daytime here. Anything above 100%, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely fine. Whoa. Um. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Caps at 175%, probably because it's got quite, quite a short growth period. Um, last one is about 80 days. Growing time's 10 days. Wow, okay. Now, depending on how much wood that gives us, it might be worth building a massive bamboo farm inside the mountain. With one of the skylights, or even with even with lamps to some extent, when we dealt with uh, energy to that state. Wow, that'd be really cool. Okay, then. Eagle Throg. Muscle Parasites. That's the worst one you could have gotten. Okay, um... So, basically, for a few days now, she's going to be much, much worse at doing things. She's also going to have significant pain. 100% tiredness as well, so she's going to be just basically half as effective in everything she's doing. That's really, really annoying. So she's going to tend to herself there. Man, I can't believe that. And with the lung as well. This is basically killing off the eagle. So I'm really glad we got this other builder there to uh, help keep the colony afloat. That's really disappointing. Okay. So I've rearranged the kitchen somewhat. I've moved the cooker away from the butcher's table because if an area by the cooker is dirty, then the the chance of food poisoning is increased. So by moving the butcher's table away, which is obviously going to make blood and dirt appear from when we're dragging animals to it, we've Kind of increase the chance of reducing that. Increase the chance of reducing that. Hang on a second. Let me pass what I just said. We've reduced the chance of food poisoning. That's what I should have said. That's how a human being would say it. So how long until this bamboo is done? Then? I really want to see what that does for us. I'm kind of curious. Is this base game? I assume it's not base game. Wouldn't really fit into the base game very well. Right, we do need more wood as well. Even though we've chopped down a shit ton more trees. Need a little tiny bit more there just to finish off the last of uh, last of everything else. What have we got? Um, Why are there Zeds coming from a bed and there's no one in it? Um, do they have a different bed? Elder thing bed. Oh, so then I, I imagine he's uncomfortable because he's in that bed. Or maybe he gets extra bonus from sleeping in a specific bed for his people. I don't know. Anyway, look, um, let's get let's get some wood and uh, finish up the last of the warehouse. Finish off the bedroom with some elder things related stuff. And then we've got ourselves quite a nice little base here. And it's finally finished. There we go. Look at that. Okay, that's going to help out a little bit. Now, not only that, but it is going to help out with the defenses too. Because it's sort of lowering um, methods of them passing through into... This is going to be the entrance to the base, by the way, up into this cave here. So, you know, it's basically just a big structure to get in the way of enemy raids. Now, we do need to finish up this killbots. That's one thing I said I was going to do. 
So we can at least plan it out, and then you guys can shout at me if I've done it poorly before next episode, so that I know what I need to fix. Um, so again, we need to make these walls three blocks thick so that sappers and things can't get to us. I'm pretty sure they should be able to build those inner blocks there, because it's on a diagonal. Now that is technically, I think, thick enough to stop sappers getting through it. Now what we want to do then is start work on a kill box. So I'm thinking we just build a massive maze, like I said, and have them wander through it. Um, the issue is, though, will they not just dig through the walls? I suppose if there's a path, they won't actually dig through it. All right, let me, let me start work on it, and you guys can tell me what you think. So here's the idea for the kill box. Please, for the love of God, tell me if this is an inefficient or there is a way better method of doing this. So what I'm going to do is actually I might even make that one three blocks thick just to uh, discourage sappers, things like that. So what we've got is I've planned out the area where the geothermal generator is going to go. If we ever need to tap that, I wanted to keep it free. So this area, or the actual floors themselves, are mud moats. That's going to slow them down quite heavily because it's very difficult to walk through mud. Now between that, I'm probably going to smooth out these varying stone areas that we obviously, the rough marble there. Because that will speed them up. And what that will do is that will help separate the numbers. Because if some are moving quickly, so, so let's say for example, um, my mouse is um, a, a horrible enemy boy here to steal my organs, right? It's going to move through, very slowly through this bit, and then fast, and then slowly... And then very, very, very slowly all through this. And then fast again. What it's going to do is it's going to break up the numbers. Because after this person is gaining traction later on. Now we want to make it so this area is all smoothed off. Because then they gain a lot of traction very quickly. Meanwhile, the other people that were following them are going to be still back here. In fact, what we might even want to do is remove all of the mud from here. So that they're coming around the corner while other people are still moving through the mud. That way, all the guns can be focused on one person coming through one wall. That's my plan anyway. And of course, we've got those three blocks thick to prevent sappers. Same with this wall. And then I've also got another wall, which I'm going to build three blocks thick up there as well. But unfortunately, obviously, we can only work on two blocks at a time. So I'll go ahead and cancel that temporarily. And uh, we'll, we'll thicken it up when it's already built. That's the plan. Now, this here is marble embrasures. Now, they can stand behind that fire. It's like a very, very effective sandbag. Sort of like an arrow slot on a castle, if you want to look at it like that. Um, so we could have three of them lined up here. Or we could just not tap into this geothermal generator and have all of this being embrasures. All of these blocks here and all of these blocks here. So we can have, you know, say a colonist there and a colonist there and really catch them in a crossfire. The only thing I'm worried about, though, is will they not just stand behind this wall and shoot through? Do we need a way to encourage them actually into this area? I don't really know how we do that. Um, now, melee characters, that won't be an issue. I suppose if they're not being shot at, they won't. So we'd have to get the, 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 um, the NPCs that we're using, our, our colonists up here, to fire down onto them. So I might not be able to access this generator at all if I want to do it effectively as possible. Um, anyway, let me know. Uh, some of you out there might be remote aficionados who are much better at this than me. So please, for the love of God, tell me. Because this sort of storyteller sounds quite difficult. Now we are playing on medium, which isn't too difficult, but it's not too hard either. Um, not too difficult, but not too hard. It's not too easy, but it's not too hard. Um, as the colony gets bigger, though, obviously we're going to hit by bigger things. We've got lots of varying mods. We've made enemies of the Enron Corp who are insanely overpowered. Like, they can actually turn up with tanks. So, that's something we've got to look out for. So, this kill box needs to be freaking good. Now, we could also... I'm pretty sure steel traps don't degrade, do they? So, we could always line this with some traps as well, just to help, you know, clamp down on them, literally and, and metaphorically there. Um, but, obviously, building them out of wood, I think they destroy immediately. So, if we went for steel traps and just placed some of those along there, maybe like two per row... Now, the only thing I'm concerned about is it's going to be very difficult for our colonists to get out. But, whether our colonists ever want to leave... Short of making caravans. Maybe we could build like a big door up in this area. Which the AI, I don't think would prioritise knocking down if there is a technically a path through. Anyway, let me know. Shout out to my top tier, insane, cult-minded patrons. Big Dick, Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Halting, Hey Dog, Croesus, Gabriel Mandos, Jocelyn, Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Logan Thorne, Conspired Team, James Ogilvy, Escape, Jackson Women, and Tyler Birch. For their cult levels of support, thank you. And to my sensible tier patrons, we have Nathaniel Lindbergh, Brandon Montoniak, Necro Phil and Felix Steele, Princess Ugly the Dragon, Nick, Noble Esquit, Lachkley, Zara Even, Facundo Vasquez, Paul Master, Imperator Augustus, Jack Allen, Chancellor Chief Palti 9, The Lizard King, Ron Thomas, Yoran DeVries, UFTs, Don't Come Super 7, Jordan Campbell, Asra and Sudini, and Jordan, Joseph Beer and Chris. Sorry, I've got a new list and it takes me a while to get my brain into the order of the new list. Thank you all for your support as well. We're keeping the channel alive. We're quite close to that $600 goal, which would be absolutely insane because it would mean I can make whatever I wanted without having to worry about being demonetized then. Lots more content freedom. That's what this channel needs. Uh, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> you know, in hindsight, maybe that's a bad idea. I'll see you next time.